my guest died. He found himself in hell. But all of a sudden, he heard a voice, and the voice said, it's not your time. And the next thing you knew, you were like in the gate of heaven. Yeah, I was. Uh, why? Why? You, you were at that point a backslidden, non-believing person. Exactly. You know, I'd still be in hell if it wasn't for two things. One, it wasn't my time. And the second thing, I had a mother that prayed for me. Now, my mother prayed yeah, for me. Yeah, but everyone has people pray for them. Well, that's good. Keep it up. Because my mother prayed for me three times a day, at least, all the time. And by the time I'm 26, that's over 22,000 prayers. And she, my mother was a praying woman of God. And she hung on to God and she says, God, you've got to make me a promise. None of my children will go to hell. And so she asked God to make her a promise. And she believed God made her that promise. He did. And that's why I went to heaven. Tell me the first thing that you, first of all, did you know that you were at heaven in that point? Actually said, yes, I did. I knew I was in heaven. The reason why I knew I was heaven, first of all, I saw what it looked like. <laughs> it was just the opposite of hell. It had to be heaven, you know, when you got there and how beautiful it was. Your spirit knows these things. And I'm greeted by an angel. So that's the first clue I had. This was an angel. As bad as it was and as hopeless as it was there in hell, I now had this most euphoric feeling. Everything was wonderful. It was beautiful. Here I am. I'm up in heaven. This angel's greeting me. And this angel's talking to me, explaining things to me about it. Yeah, it was great. I knew I was in heaven. What's about the first thing you remember seeing that had an impact? I th the first impact, of course, was the angel. You know, because the angel was so tall and so big. The voice that that angel had was so powerful, but yet he was so gentle. I say he, because it looked like a man, was very gentle. And he took me by the hand. And then I, wa I walked through the gate. And as I walked through the gate of heaven, you know, I saw these buildings. I saw these mountains, like white stone, like I've never seen before. Sparkling white stone. It was unbelievable. I saw streets of gold, the softest gold. This gold, you could step on it. It was so soft and beautiful, but it was gold. You knew it was gold. It was beautiful. And then there was a river flowing right through the city. And this river was crystal clear. It sounded like children. You know, when you ever hear babies laugh, it sounded like babies' laughter. It was so beautiful. Heaven was just awesome like that. When you could see those buildings sitting there and you could listen to that river, I could listen to it all day like little children. It was beautiful. One of the most wonderful things I've ever seen or heard in my life. I got to see that while I was up in heaven. Heaven is unbelievable, Sid. You were telling me the difference between living 100% in the spirit or maybe as a believer, 2% in the spirit and 98% still in the flesh. What's it like to live all in the spirit, 100%? Wow, okay. That's a loaded question, Sid. I know. <laughs> <laughs> it, is, it is a feeling that you, I wish I could put it in the words for you, but I'll tell you this. Every time I get a chance that I can be alone with God and I can get into the spirit, and I really mean this because I really love that feeling. When you're there, when the glory of God is on you and it's so strong on you, you'll never feel anything like it. it penetrates every part of your being. You smell it, you taste it, you feel it. Every single thing, you hear it. You feel, hear, taste, and see the glory of God. And it's all over you. No matter where you go in heaven, it's on you. And that's something that you can, once that's on you, it's with you forever. It's unbelievable. It's great. You, you, you told me in heaven, you know everything. You don't have to uh, go on a computer. What is this? <laughs> uh, it, it's like you could look at, like we use Google today, but you could look at it and go, I instantly knew everything about it. Everything you did, you could see it's your spirit. Our minds are more of a filter than it is what we think it is. Our mm -hmm. brains are. Our spirit knows everything. Our spirit is alive. Our spirit never rests. It's awake. 24 7 because there is no day and night in heaven it's all the time it just is so, so the is. more we on earth the more we yield to the spirit as opposed to our sense knowledge of our flesh the more we have heaven on earth 
Absolutely. You got it. <laughs> That's exactly got right. It. <laughs> you got it. Um, what about time in heaven? Uh, there's no time. You, you can spend one second in heaven and you feel like you've been there, you know, 10 years. You spend almost three hours in heaven. Let me tell you what. People joke around and they say, you know, a thousand years is like, you know, one day is like a thousand years. Well, if that's the case, I was 44 years in heaven because I was there for about three hours. So <laughs> it was great. I got to see a lot of things and it's, it, there's no time. Uh, you were shown end time events. Yes. Even, uh, uh, and this, this, this is phenomenal. You know, you read in the book of Genesis how God created the earth. You had a ringside seat in heaven, how God created the earth. What was that like? Sid, when the angel said, turn and look, I turned and looked. And when I did, the angel just completely disappeared. All I saw was a timeline of the earth. And I watched as the earth was formed. I was watching just a big ball of water in darkness, just sitting there. And all of a sudden, the Spirit of God came down and hovered, just completely hovered over, completely over the whole earth and just was his presence just lit up everything, lit that water up. And that water was just teeming with life, spiritual life, so to speak, because the Spirit of God, it reflects, but water also absorbs. So it was absorbing all that. And we think about this, you gotta remember, Sid, life, a water gives life. God gives life to water. And so it just transfers over. So yes, I got to see that, it was wonderful. Beautiful. Okay, yeah, so much to discuss. Yes. You saw, he saw end time events. For instance, you saw the barcode that was going to be used for the mark of the beast, but he saw it, what, back in 78? 1978. Before they had the barcodes. Yes. Why, what did it look like? Well, see, it's, it's kind of unique. It goes onto the back of your hand or on your forehead, and it's an invisible tattoo. It's completely invisible. You don't see it with the naked eye. You have to put it underneath the scanner that every place will have. Every place will have it at that time. But I watch, it's like a barcode and QR codes all mixed together. And it goes on the back of your hand, on your forehead, and it describes everything about who you are, where you've been, what you've done, everything, what you're allowed to buy, sell, if okay. you can. Time is escaping. You yes. saw what was going to happen to a number of nations. Yes. Pick one real quick and tell me a couple of highlights. So what's going to happen? Well, let's, let's, pick, um, let's pick Russia. There's things that are happening in Russia, and as the future goes, and, and I saw some of this too, some of it's already happened, but more things are happening. I saw holes opening up in the earth in Russia. That's happened since, that, since I came out with reporting that in the book. So those type of things are coming out, and these things are going on. But I watched what happened, because this is like the big bear, and they think they're gonna do a whole lot, but guess what? The Russian people are gonna actually revolt against who's running in office even right now. And you're gonna watch this happen. And they're trying to do different things. And I'm telling you, it's gonna be a mess over there. There's gonna be things happening in Russia that we've never thought would ever happen. And it's gonna do it. It's gonna be unbelievable. I'll, I'll tell you what, there's no safe place anywhere yeah. on earth except Jesus except the Messiah being in you, except the Messiah being your Lord. Say this prayer. Let's solidify your situation for now and forever. Repeat after me. Dear God, Dear God I'm, a I'm a sinner. I've sinned against you. Against you. I'm, so I'm so sorry. Jesus, Jesus come inside of me. Be my, Lord. Be my Lord. I love you, God. Love you, Amen. Amen. Ivan. Yes. Why did you come back to earth? Said so I came back with a message. I'm, I'm back here to warn people that there really is a hell, but also to let them know that there really is a heaven and that it's time that we start doing things. But the big thing, Sid, is for the Christians it's time that we start evangelizing. There's a greater glory that's coming and there's things that we need to do to get prepared for those things. You did not open your mouth publicly about this for 35 years. And, and now you're starting to talk about it. Why? Sid, I was told when I was sent back, I was told do not speak about these things, do not talk about these things until the Holy Spirit releases me to do it. 
and I kept my mouth shut. All right, and you saw the glory coming. Pray a release of the glory on everyone watching right now. Yes, right now. Heavenly Father, I just pray that everybody that's watching this, I don't care who they are, but God, if they believe in you in any way, shape, or form, I release that glory. I release the anointing of the glory on them. I pray right now, God, that that glory will encompass every part of their mind, body, soul, and spirit, and that God, this glory will take them so that they'll do things they've never done. I pray right now, Heavenly Father, that you release them into laying hands on the sick, that you release them to cast out demons, that you release them to just go ahead and raise the dead, God, all of that. And we ask this in Jesus' holy and precious name. Amen.